Awesome cut. That's good chill, chill tunage right there. Oh, dude, that was the Jersey Bounce by Dr. Sax Love. Oh, <laughs> cheers to that. I, That's a good one. I like that. Obviously, the doctor's given name. Yeah, cheers, exactly. Dr. Sax Love. Welcome, everybody, uh, to another Clip Listening Lounge. And, and we are real excited about today because uh, the weather is warm and uh, it's right before a holiday weekend. We want to give a little jump to the holiday. And that's why we, we pick Thursdays, you know, Thursdays at four o'clock. So, <laughs> and we encourage everybody, uh, hopefully you have a refreshing beverage to enjoy during this, uh, we call it a happy hour. We like to keep it light and fun, although we want it to be very informative. We have... Uh, a special guest with us, Mr. Mike Barato, and he's he's taking it to the next level. He's outside, so we appreciate that. And you know, Mr. Got Matt paid. Summers. Thank you. So, yeah. uh, and and you guys, you know, we've done a few of these, but I'm Mark Casvant, so uh, I'm happy to be the host uh, with my partner in crime, Mr. Matt Summers. He he is the the, the DJ and uh, the slide. Uh, VJ, I guess. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> movies, everything. He's the media master. I want to be your Alan Hunter, Mark. That'd be great. I'll be your, your, your video DJ. And uh, don't forget, we have Brittany Kelly behind the scenes, also Jill Eskel. And uh, we will have some cool prize giveaways for this session. Uh, we're going to give away some Klipsch Grooves, which is a cool little product. Very good sounding, natural sounding, great craftsmanship, and uh, also, something you can take outside. It's uh, yeah. powered, self-powered, and Bluetooth enabled. So, great product. Um, and that's yeah, let's for, talk yeah. about the groove for a second. I'm looking yeah. for a, a little a picture of it here. We can post. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's the the clips groove. We are giving away five of these today, um, and this thing is a monster in a very small package. Uh, fits really nicely inside your gym bag, on the back shelf of your truck, um, really anywhere you want to put it. Um, take it to the racquetball court. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, but I, the, the cool thing about that product really to me is it is indestructible, you know, um, in air quotes, obviously it's yes. not going to withstand a trash compactor, um, but it, it, it's a, it's a brick of awesome sound. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. It's, it's beastly. You know, we'll take them, you know, like Mark said, we'll take it outside. We'll take them on trips, throw it in the bag, just like you see there. And it's it's small enough and light enough that uh, you can take it with you anywhere. Uh, the battery is uh, lasts long enough that you can throw it in the bag for a week or two week trip without a charger, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. And it's because it's so well built, well made. It sounds killer. Yeah, I'm using mine in uh, in the in the bathroom next to the shower because it's splash proof. So oh, nice. it's a good place yeah. to have that. Just put it in the corner, just like Paul Klipsch taught us to, and it sounds fantastic. Oh. Yeah, that's right. It's a great <laughs> way to demonstrate corner loading. It's funny, uh, you know, you said it, 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 it can take abuse from uh, the environment, but it can take abuse from certain playlists that I've been putting together. 
<laughs> you know, Mark, we were just talking about your playlist. Um, I, we, we actually, we should define the rules of, of the winners of how you get a groove. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be picking the five best questions in the chat. Um, Brittany Kelly will will pick the, the five best questions and we'll announce them at the end of the session at uh, five o'clock. Yeah, awesome. Let's, let's talk about this playlist because this is definitely the, the hot summer playlist you've been putting together. You wanna tell the, 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 the team about this a little bit? Yeah, it's funny. Um, so I, my brother, John, he, he, he's probably watching and um, he, he influenced me at, at an early age for, for hi-fi gear and, and of course music. But down in Florida, we lived in an area where there's a lot of progressive electronic and industrial music going on in the clubs and, you know, college years and after college. And I found um, a TDK metal tape recently. Um, I still have a cassette deck, you know, Yamaha three head deck that you know, we'll do 20 to 20 kilohertz. I was telling Mike earlier. So it, it's really, a, a it's hard to distinguish compact disc from the tape recording. And I found this tape that I made in 88, you know, um, and it had this killer mix. And um, I decided I'm gonna recreate this mix in, in uh, streaming through a, stream, a streaming playlist. And the beauty of that is I'm not limited to 90 minutes. It's It's like, 36 tracks now it's growing every day you know and i'm i'm throwing music on here that I, we haven't heard matt you and i i mean john we talked about wax tracks the other day in this this music and and we i haven't heard some of this stuff in maybe three plus decades and and it sounds great and then we're you know we're talking about outdoor audio today and the speakers that i have outside when i'm grilling in the winter the summer they stay out there the whole time i pound on them around usually the, with techno industrial music <laughs> yes the entire calendar year and when i'm out there cooking <laughs> and i'm freezing and zero degrees or 90 degrees it's still the same misery you know dad we need some burgers and stuff come on so i'm out there and i might be drinking a cold one or or four and uh listening to this playlist and just pounding on these speakers and they take they take it and it's so much fun oh my let's, gosh let's so uh, we have a shot of mark's outside system uh Brittany, if you could throw that out for us you do i think that's isn't th those your aws oh 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 yeah yeah that actually <laughs> what's funny about this is uh many years ago <laughs> many years ago uh i can't remember who who came out uh to photograph it if it was keith or one of our photographers on on staff you know maybe phil i don't know who it was but they they i said you know i got these things hanging and and it's it's a pretty typical setup you know right under the eaves and and by the house and you know this is it and and i i'm looking at the on our online pictures i'm like that picture is still there it's still going you know <laughs> but but those speakers have i mean these have been outside everybody you should know this i mean we have a lifetime warranty on our architectural outdoor stuff and i've had these things out for 20 plus years you know non-stop around the clock the rock speakers have been hit with hail you know i've had roofs replaced but i haven't replaced those speakers you know yeah. it's it's funny stuff yeah. well you know and and i yeah. want to just kind of maybe set up what we're doing today uh with uh, the people who are watching, um, we're going to kind of walk you through um, some Eclipse's offerings to be able to take your favorite music outside from the s very smallest things that we make all the way to some of the coolest uh, fully installed Grande systems. Um, and we've got uh, graphics to show you. And then, you know, having Mike here with us is great because, you know, he helped design a lot of these systems um, and uh, definitely works in that space and can speak to it. So we'd love to kind of get that part of it on the road. Do you want to start with uh, maybe the yeah. smallest of the small? Maybe uh, how about some sport headphones? That would get you outside oh, first, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that will so get you outside. Let me pull some of those up and we can take a look at that. And we can talk about our new T5 headphones just a little bit. Um, how long has Klipsch been in the headphone business? Well, let's see. Since the Klipsch image, which we, we launched, uh, mm -hmm. that was in 2005-ish. Uh, yeah. 17 years? 16 years, something like that. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. We rock the world with that one because it's still the smallest. It's the most diminutive armature based in ear. It's so teeny tiny and they're so full range, fantastic sounding. But with our research with Indiana University, working with the audiology and you know um, medical school on on the anatomy of the human ear, 
discovering that they're not round, they're oval. And we came up with the patented oval ear tips that really are comfortable and they seal. Um, that, that started it for us. Awesome. And then we've taken it into the true wireless category with the T5. Um, this is the T5 II Sport version um, with a high, high impact waterproof case. Um, the, uh, the buds are also rated, uh, you know, IPX. So they, they're splash proof as well. Um, what do you like about yours, Mike? And so I so I mentioned the, the buds are, are IP rated. The case is also IP67 rated. And you'll, you'll notice that the case there, uh, it, it's not your typical uh, headphone case. It's more like a, a Pelican case where it's this extremely rugged, like latch close case. And you can take it with you. You know, you guys, like, you were literally taking product photos like you see there in a riverbed. And these withstood, withstood the photo shoot and everything beyond. And that's what I love about them. You know, you, you don't have to worry about throwing them in a bag or, or throwing them in a you know, you've got like friends that love to kayak. You throw them in a kayak and if the thing tips over, as long as it's tethered to the boat, it's going to be fine, right? Like completely, uh, I shouldn't say completely, but relatively submergible, definitely splash proof. They're great in any environment. And of course, it's that T5 sound, that classic Klipsch headphone sound, uh, regardless of sport, you know, non-sport, uh, you're getting the same acoustic performance you're just getting this upgraded uh, sort of life proof uh, design out of the T5 Sport. <laughs> so sweat proof, kayak proof, everything you need. And isn't there, I think, I believe there's some sort of a, a silica gel or a pack or something in there that does extra uh, moisture removal when you put them in. So if say you uh, leave the gym and you're sweaty or you've been outside working out or kayaking or whatever, and then you put them in the case, close it overnight, it will remove the moisture from the headphones itself. It, uh, if, I, if I understand how that works correctly. Right. So it, for those of you that are familiar with like a silica gel pack that you get in, uh, you know, any consumer electronics. Yeah. So so Mark's showing the inside of the case right there. If you open up the case, you'll actually hear sort of this um, uh, sand sound. And that's the silica gel in the case that's designed to wick away moisture. And you see this design in a lot of like pro, pro audio in-ear monitors like when you go see a concert and bands have in-ear monitors uh, in their ears the cases for those in-ear monitors have silica gel packs in them to wick away that sweat of you know two three hours of live performance and that's exactly what we're working with here so don't eat it You're not don't eat it. eat it <laughs> you um, can't eat it but this it, is like the ASMR from it's uh, in there from out loud right. it's, it's what's your favorite ASMR <laughs> yeah. sound yeah and when you're my doing favorite the Zoom ASMR call, sound is my D5 sport <laughs> and and briefly, we also make these in a McLaren version. Um, here's uh, Lando Norris working out with that version of it. Um, talk about taking it outside. Um, not only is he working yeah. outside, but if you're going to go outside, you might as well go to an F1 race. Yeah. So, yeah, Lando Norris, who took third place at Monaco this weekend. Congratulations, P3. Uh, Mr. Norris. But, yeah, the McLaren edition of the T5 mm -hmm. True Wireless Sport. Again, killer headphones. Uh, great sounding, uh, great sounding piece. IE67 rated case with the T5 uh, McLaren edition. You actually get a wireless charging uh, pad in the box with that. So your wireless charger comes included, but wireless charging on T5 Sport and T5 Sport McLaren. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I want to keep pushing because we got a lot of ground to cover yeah. and there's some really yeah. cool, yeah. cool things. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, we've talked about the groove, um, but another take it outside product that is also very groove like is the heritage groove. Um, and there's, yeah. and it's a really cool, if you're a heritage fan of that aesthetic, um, this is a really good, uh, a good product to check out. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah. So the heritage groove, uh, for those of you that are familiar with the Groove, same acoustic package, uh, different different exterior, different wrap. So like you said, it's it's the same uh, design, same look and feel of our Heritage product. You know, sort of that old school retro uh, control panel on top with the salt and pepper grill. And yeah, it just really exudes um, sort of that mid-century modern look that's so popular nowadays. So uh, where the Groove, 
the classic groove is more of a you know rugged take it on the run uh, uh, product. The the heritage groove is a little bit more of a, a piece of art, a piece of furniture. And you know, you mentioned Matt, your groove. You keep it in the bathroom. We actually keep a heritage groove in our bathroom. So listen to it in the shower. Um, you know, not quite as splash proof as the groove, but it's held up for a couple of years now uh, in a in a moisture filled bathroom. So it's doing really well. That's awesome. And that's real metal and real uh, yep. fabric and real wood. Um, and also, I still have that plant <laughs> sitting on my coffee table. <laughs> I, I promise you the plant will die before the heritage group dies. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Well, there's a couple so of really next? cool products. Yeah, from a from a uh, sort of a, a portable standpoint, being able to take things yeah. into you know different parts of the of of the uh, the house or outside. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about we were, we got into it a little bit with with Mark talking about the surface mount stuff. I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. What yeah. products we have from the DIY yeah. standpoint? Um, let me see if I yes. can bring some stuff up. But we've got. Um, there's AW product. Um, there's the KO product. Can you talk a little bit about that, Mike? And I'll yeah. look for some graphics. Yeah. So, so AW product and and KO that Matt's referring to. We have the AW series, which is a series of under eave speakers, just like the graphic we showed a couple minutes ago. And the KO uh, KHO seven is a sort of a variant of those. Um, you sort of go up in, in performance as you get into the AW series, but the Keho, uh, yeah, right there, that image, uh, really nice looking speaker and has been uh, one of our top selling outdoor speakers for years and years now. So a uh, great value, great sounding speaker, but under each speakers for me have always been a great DIY solution because it's very easy to run wire to them from the attic through the eave uh, of the house and you just mount them and they're you know, set it and forget it. Run them off of a uh, powered zone two of a receiver or, uh, you know, a separate amplifier. And with today's uh, streaming technologies, whether it's, uh, you know, Google uh, Chromecast or, you know, any Sonos, uh, like a Sonos port or a Sonos amp, uh, you can control all of this stuff from your phone, but you're still getting the performance uh, and the sound quality of a, a traditional passive speaker hooked to an amp. Yeah. It's really powerful. I use I use Stream, you know, to feed outdoors, you know, yeah. Yeah. and, and uh, the Clip Stream products. And um, it's great, you know, being outside and, you know, you can control your source and, and your volume. And, you know, yep. if somebody's yelling, you can turn it down real quick and then turn it right back up, you know, yeah. things like that. <laughs> I or if you need to... I gotta, you need to yell to one of your kids to get you a beverage, you know, you, then you can turn it back <laughs> up. You know, you know. I got a quick question from Mike, though. It's, you said something a minute ago yeah. that really made me go, hmm. Um, the If I have a uh -oh. receiver, if I have got a receiver yes. that has zone one and say there's a second zone on there and I've never done anything with it or maybe I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. That So basically you're saying you could take a separate set of speakers and run those outside. Yeah, so most uh, receivers nowadays uh, have either an unpowered or even a powered zone two. And powered meaning there's an amplifier built in. Um, if it's unpowered, generally you'll see zone two out and it'll be a couple RCA jacks. In that case, you need to run a separate amplifier. But if you have a receiver that has a powered uh, zone two out, meaning speaker outputs, uh, you can run them straight to the speaker. And what that will allow you to do is run uh, different content or the same content that you're running on your your indoor system to your outdoor speakers, which is great if you're having a party. You can run uh, playlists inside and outside from the same receiver. So it's really um, really easy way to control, you know, what whole home audio from an existing receiver and add on to that system and and you know grow the system as your house grows or as your family grows. That's fantastic. And it looks like they, they go up pretty easy with just a couple of screws yeah. Yeah. on the yeah, surface really, mount. Yeah. Yeah. If I can do if it. You can hang, <laughs> if, you know. if you can hang a picture on your wall, you can hang an outdoor speaker. Absolutely. <laughs> that's funny because I don't like to hang pictures, but I could do the speakers. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So we've had some questions. If you can pay somebody to hang a picture on your wall like Mark can, you can pay somebody to hang an outdoor speaker. <laughs> yeah. 
we've had some great questions. You know, uh, I think some of our new potential customers or people that have owned Klipsch in the past may be interested yeah. about some fundamental benefits and advantages that Klipsch has for outside. And I would just, and Mike, you can expand on this, but something I would touch on is the high efficiency thing means that 25 watts is going to go a long way for audio quality outside yep. and volume levels. If you want to crank it up, reliability, the speakers, you're not yes. going to self-destruct because you're not dumping a lot of power into them where they're, it's generating heat instead of sound. Right. So high efficiency and low distortion plays well. Also control directivity. You know, outside, yes, uh, you can really focus the sound into your listening area, your patio, your pool area, you know, anywhere, yep. your front, you know, anywhere you have the, the, the speakers. Now, if you, you know, we make fun of this mod, this unofficial uh, motto that Matt came up with, pissing off the neighbors since 1946. If you do that outside, it's because you you deliberately aim them that way to your neighbors. Now, yeah. you can contain it uh, in your space, but it, it really is effective. Uh, it really works yeah. well for outside. M Mike, there, there's please, a, there's a on that. thin line between... Um, uh, pissing off the neighbors and getting the cops called on you. And that's, you know, that's the control directivity is essential when you're trying to have a party that goes late into the night. Uh, you want all of that acoustic energy directed right, right at your party guests, right? And not at the, uh, the next door neighbor that has a three month old sleeping at home or, um, or what have you. So that's it, not only is it an important acoustic story, which we'll talk about in a second, but honestly, Control directivity is essential for outdoor products because you're trying to create, um, you know, a room where there's not really a room, and you're trying to limit uh, the dispersion or limit the uh, excess sound getting out of that area. So it's really important. I love you too, Steve. When I saw that pop up on the screen, miss you, man. Love you. Um, <laughs> but from from an acoustic standpoint, it's also very important because. Uh, just like I said, you're focusing all of that acoustic energy. So it's a much more dynamic experience for your listeners. It's a much more uh, efficient uh, acoustic uh, representation or uh, acoustic reproduction, I should say. And because of that, it's it's uh, much less distortion than you typically get from a direct radiating outdoor speaker. So and it's cleaner that, sound. It's more dynamic. And I think that really uh, relates into, um, say, if you have some outdoor sound and you're spending a large... Uh, amount of time in your on your patio in your backyard and you've got sound because you want to have sound there um the distortion brings on ear fatigue over time and that really yes. makes you yep. tired of listening to but if but if i'm at the pool in the backyard which i don't have a pool by the way but if i did um and i'm out there i want to be out there for a couple of hours and i don't want to just suddenly get yeah. annoyed by my music so i think yep. the, the the low distortion high efficiency of the clip system um when it is also weatherized to withstand all the elements to be out in that space yep. um is, is a really cool thing to, to, to be able to enjoy for a long period of time. Well, I'll speak to that real yeah. quick. Okay. So the times that my brother has come into town with his family and, you know, there is the, the, the hour where the, the little ones, they need to go to bed. And then eventually, you know, our wives go to bed and we're out in the patio and, and we got Led Zeppelin playing. And there's something about when you're well into the evening uh, and maybe you've had a few beverages and, and, and it's a beautiful night and you've got high fidelity outside at, you know, a reasonable volume, not out of control, but there's something magical about it when you're looking at the stars and you're listening to great music with your bro. And it could be your virtual bro. You know what I mean? It, you guys are my bros. Any special guests you have, that you you will make memories when you do that, and and there's something about when you're outside the sound, uh, how music takes on a, another quality of. It's just special. I, I, I it's hard for me to put it into words, which I know might be shocking for you guys, <laughs> but it, it's it's it, it's fantastic, and um, we we talk about how we can't wait to do it again, you know, to do that and just go through the playlists and just hear music that. You know, when you're enjoying it on speakers that are up to the task. I mean, there's nothing worse than hearing some of that great rock of our childhood, for example, 
uh, sound not quite up to it, you know, outside. I mean, there's no excuse today in, in the 21st century to have junky speakers outside. I mean, you can have full range audio reproduction outside, clean audio reproduction that and rivals. And let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's move on to that. Cause if you wanted yeah. to, let's say, and I'm just going to be devil's advocate here, but say I've spent a lot of money on a, a, a nice reference premiere system or some K horns. And I want to be able to roll right out into my patio, open the back doors and have that happen. Um, you know, what does that look like um, from, from Klipsch's standpoint? Um, you know, what do we try to do uh, to, to create that experience? Um, and, and is this something that I can do myself or something that I need help with? It, it depends on how it kind of depends on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Now, what, what you're showing there, Matt, is our Pro Series landscape system. And landscape speakers are sort of the new, uh, the newest trend in outdoor speakers from an acoustic standpoint and from uh, really an aesthetic standpoint. You know, they blend into the, the landscape, hence the name. Uh, they blend into the, the flower bed or what happens however you have them installed, um, since they're lower to the ground, they're, they're more out of, out of sight. Uh, they still sound incredible. And the idea of having landscape speakers also opens up the possibility of these burial subwoofers, which you see in the back. And uh, that said, they can be very difficult to install. You are generally burying wire and running it from you know, the, the landscape or the flower bed back to the amplifier into the house. So we generally, with landscape speakers, um, we recommend that those are installed by a, a installation professional, essentially a, a custom integrator, which, you know, if, um, if we have a whole list on clips.com slash custom, you can look up a, a uh, local integrator, a local clips integrator in your town and, and have them come out and really do, uh, honestly, like the home theater equivalent of an outdoor system with our landscape speakers uh, and really any of our outdoor speakers. So let's talk about that a second. I want to reinforce that because I think that's a very important point. Um, you know, clips.com slash custom. And once you get there, you can, you can enter your zip code or whatever and find a landscape uh, integrator who could help you install this system and make it be uh, the best that it can be. Now I'm assuming these things are horn loaded, so they probably sound, sound pretty awesome. Um, tell me a little bit. To? Yeah, who are you talking to? Um, of course, they're I like unloaded. It, and I love the idea of the burial <laughs> sub. So there's 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 all of that 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 uh, you know that experience coming outside. But the, the yeah. t what what what's always the hang up to me is you know do I have the space for this or do I want to make this kind of investment yeah. you know in in my in my backyard? Um, but I will tell you that some right. of the plans that you guys sent over and we've got some cool stuff to show. Uh, the audience today um, of how this stuff can be yeah. integrated. You could do this with with you know just a thousand square feet in your backyard, or less. Right. Absolutely. And, you I know, think we it's live... about. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. I was just going to say really quickly. It's about quality, not quantity. I mean, you yeah. can have an intimate space on your patio, and you can have a couple delivering stereo just like you're inside, and you can you can. I've seen questions. You can put a subwoofer out there to get all the deep bass. Now, if you want to have a party, yes, you can do that too. Go ahead, Mike. I think he's locked up. Do we lose him? <laughs> oh, Mike. <laughs> well, the, let's talk a little bit while we're waiting for Mike to re-engage. Um, tell me about this uh, subwoofer, Mark. I know you're you've got some experience with it. So it's buried in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, you, you can have uh, some subterranean subs. Mike, are you back? Are you back? I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. This is nope. my internet apparently reaching out on my porch. So bear with oh, me. Thank a, you. No problem. No problem. Well, actually, so uh, Matt was going to have me describe the subs, the subwoofer options out there, but why don't you go ahead and do that if you can? Yeah. Well, the we've got a, a couple got a few options actually the two burial subs that you mentioned there's a 12 inch sub and there's a 10 inch sub and uh what's what's really important about both of those is that 
we generally see 12 inch subs and even 10 inch subs as being taking up a lot of real estate, right? Very, very large uh, footprints, but the ability to bury them does a couple things. Obviously it, it hides them in the landscape and it minimizes uh, their overall footprint in the space. So you're able to get, because they're a bandpass design, you're able to get really deep base reproduction uh, without taking up a lot of space in the yard and, and by uh, most importantly for a lot of customers, hiding them from eyesight, uh, except for, you know, a little chimney that comes out of the ground. But just like, yeah. just like any other sub, they're higher performance, the larger you go. Yeah. And, and their band, I mean, Mike mentioned, so, you know, these are designed for the long haul, you know, they're, they're, they're designed for high output, you know, by the nature of the design, uh, band pass design, um, but very finely tuned for their base range. And um, mm -hmm. you're going to activate deep frequencies. The 12 will do 25 Hertz. I mean, think about that everybody, yeah. 25 Hertz. I mean, if you, yeah. any electronic music you, you, you have, it'll cover it. And um, I haven't gone this route yet. However, I have used, and somebody asked me about my setup, what I do if, I'm, if it's a special occasion, it, every day is a special occasion. I, I will drag one of our home subwoofers outside with a wireless kit. Mike, you know how crazy I am about that stuff. I, I nice. the, the ASW 310, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the 310 with the wireless kit. I, I mean, it's only a $1,600 subwoofer I'll put on our patio, you know, to, to crank up the tunes, you know? I mean, oh, I like my it. bass. I like quality bass, you know? So I will do that. I'll, I'll put the sub out there for, for the duration uh, on, on a weekend afternoon. But, you know, the permanent install thing makes a lot of sense because you don't have to drag it in and out. Right, if you're not Mark Cassavant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and, and I want to say the picture that we're seeing right here right now is is, is pretty amazing because that is the, all you see of the subwoofer. Mike, you called it a chimney, right. but to me it's a little mushroom. It's like a little garden mushroom yeah. that kind of fits in the space. Yeah. Um, maybe that's an aesthetic we should we should work towards is the uh, you know the little garden magical gardens that the kids put together try to get some mushrooms in there. Yeah, um, but, it's a giant portobello is what it is. Giant. Exactly, but the majority of it is buried <laughs> under it. Now I got a question, and this is a dumb question, but I yeah. want to throw it out there um, because I've I've heard this system um, and I've been very impressed by it. When the subwoofer is going and it's thumping and you can hear those deep frequencies, can you feel it in the ground? Do your plants feel it? Uh, well, I can't, I can't speak to what your plants feel, Matt, but, uh, you don't feel it. And which is important mm. because a lot of these are, are positioned, you know, next to, um, next to foundations of houses. And we always talk about like, you know, rocking the foundation. We don't actually want to do that. We don't want to develop big cracks in your foundation because you put a big subwoofer next to it. So, uh, you know, these are designed just like, um, just like our home theater subs where there's internal bracing that keeps those vibrations from getting out. And that is part of our efficiency story. You know, if a, if a cabinet is vibrating, uh, then you're actually losing acoustic energy. So we don't want to do that. So no, you That's can't true. feel it. It's not going to do any damage to your foundation or, or really, I don't think your plants even. I hope not. Yeah, fantastic. Ho hopefully it'll chase rodents away. You know, the above ground sound will chase <laughs> oh, away, true. you know. Chipmunks it depends on your holes. selection. If you're playing KM FDM, who knows that you know they're gone. That'll chase <laughs> away. That'll chase away uh, friendly True. neighbors. You know, I mean that music. Uh, but but then again, um, the you know my my kids even you know when when I'm playing this stuff back, they're like, "What is this music, Dad?" You know, and I'm like, "This is great music, is what this is." Okay, don't even question it. Yeah. You know, don't, don't the, question Dad's music. Don't get into Dad's special sauce. But no, no, it's <laughs> odd. I, you know, somebody asked about the wireless kit. So if you look at the clip subs uh, with the range, we've got the WA2 and 3 kits for different generations of the subs. You can do this with most any of our SPL line with the WA2. Yep. And then the uh, the, the compact series, um, the SW line with the, yep. the WA3. And it's great. I mean, it works. It, it's got great range. You know, it's a it's basically a 2.4 gig frequency that's outside of your Wi-Fi. So it's not going to screw with your yep. Wi-Fi. And I've got multiples. Of, I've got a lot of wireless kits in the house. And it, 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 
it, it it's reliable. You know, I would tell you otherwise. I mean, I've got so many. It's yeah. like this house is like a test zone for all this stuff. But it's a yes, fun it it's a fun way to use your sub. You know, take it outside and rock it. Let it let it breathe a little bit outside. You know, let it move the yeah. air out there. I mean, it's something you can experiment with, everybody, just for fun. Yeah. One quick yeah. question from the list I want to ask you guys. So we talked about the AW stuff and the KHO and some of that stuff that's surface mount. And then we talked about this landscape system that, that Klipsch has. Are these things paintable? Can you paint them to match your environment? Absolutely. Yep. So uh, if somebody yeah, really the, wanted to paint that as a mushroom, it could be a mushroom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get artistic. I mean, it's just honestly, it's just an aluminum. It's a textured aluminum top cap, so it's totally rust proof. Yeah. But you know, you can spray it with some rust oleum primer and paint it whatever color you want. Oh, that's fantastic! You, you can you can paint the surface mount speakers, you know, to match your house if you want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's yeah. all. It's all paintable. I mean, if you you know, you yeah. can take the grills off and paint them, just like you would paint in ceiling speakers or in walls. You can do that. And and by the way, I have the AW six fifty R. Wait, AWR. Uh, sorry, AWR six fifty SM yeah. speak rock speakers, like our first rock speaker. I've got them around the house. Yeah. And I was yeah. telling Matt this. You can see. Mike, you can see impressions in the finish from hail. You know, you can see some Mars marring in the finish, you know, I mean, but they're still kicking. They're still kicking. And I was telling Matt, occasionally, all I need to do, like in the spring, I'll do it. Uh, I'll just get a, a thing of uh, like Rust-Oleum texture, you know, granite finish and just give them a little touch up, you know, because they've been beaten on the, by the sun. It's totally the paintable. It's totally for paintable. decades, for decades, yep. and they're still going. They sound great. I'm yep. like, why would I switch these out? They sound great. I'm just going to give them a little touch up yep. with the finish, and they're good to go. So if you if you have the Clips yeah. landscape well, system with the subwoofer and you're doing some mixing and matching, we have uh, the rock speakers that uh, also fit in with that, and they, they can be interchanged. I mean, it's essentially the same speaker as the satellite, isn't it, Mike? Exactly right. Yeah. The, so the pro series rocks that you see there, uh, I think that's the six and a half inch. And then in the back is the 10 inch rock subwoofer. Those are the exact same drivers, the exact same acoustic tuning as the landscape system. So yeah, you can mix and match them. You know, we have, uh, we have custom integration partners that want to do uh, landscape system in the garden, but then rocks by the pool because obviously for surface mount. Uh, instead of staking something into the ground. So yeah, you can mix and match and you're going to get a, a predictable high performance uh, result from either one. They're the same horn loaded tweeter yep. and driver. I mean, yes. they are, Mike is saying they're the same, but just different shapes. I mean, this is the same product, ready to go. Pick pick your form. Yep. And they come in multiple colors. They're also totally. paintable. Yep, oh, absolutely. Everything's paintable, no, Matt. Come on. <laughs> it's like yeah, everything's so purchasable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. Everything's well, paintable. Uh, you can put it in in any um, uh, really any surface mount situation you want. Like I said, people set them next to pools. Uh, people put them in landscape situations like that or flower beds. Super versatile, and you don't have to stake them into the ground like you do with the landscape speakers. That's awesome. So you know something I've noted listening to our products as opposed to other products out there is when you're outside, you're in an open anechoic environment. You know, I mean, our engineers use open plane as a, a measurement test procedure, you know, for, for our products. And when you're outside, everything gets absorbed, you know, maybe you need to turn it up for a certain sound pressure level, but I'm always scrutinizing my, the music where I'm like, I don't, I don't hear the hi hats or I, I, I want high frequencies is my point. And clips deliver the high frequencies. I mean, because of the directivity and our tweeters, the way we do it, you will hear detail from our product. Yeah. It's the opposite of those omnidirectional things at Disney world that just sound like, you know, <laughs> an AM radio, you know, I mean, it, Three, you will hear 360. Mike, remember when we were demonstrating some of these uh, new products um, down in Florida at one of the shows? We we yeah. were demonstrating a sound stage with our satellite speakers and a sub. You could hear a sound stage between the speakers, just like any of our home product, our high end home product. I mean, you could get a sound stage from landscape loudspeakers 
what does that tell you about the the, the fidelity that they're delivering? It's it's fantastic. And, and it's not just a outside, party. It's not yep. just a party. It puts the band in in the backyard. That's, is, that's yes. fantastic. It is is fantastic. It, it you cannot. I mean, I, I I feel that high fidelity sound is an affordable luxury. It, it really is. It's a luxury to hear such quality. And when you can have it outside, it's like, wow, that's, you know, it rivals the sound that some people had in their house in the 80s or 70s. You know, think about that. Well, we've got lots of different pieces of the puzzle yeah. i have i want to introduce one more image to you guys and have you guys talk about how this integrates with the system and then we can start talking about some system configurations um but before we get to that i do have one quick question for the group um so say you've got an installed sprinkler system with and you want to install a uh, landscape system uh around it um are these things you know how weatherproof waterproof are they Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, we, we so we have a landscape system in our backyard, and uh, we have a few satellites and a couple subs, and it's been out there in an Indiana summer and Indiana winter for four or five years now, and it looks brand new. I mean, these are these are designed these are built to be out in rain, out in snow, out in cold, out in heat. So little uh, little fresh water from a sprinkler won't hurt them. Yeah, fantastic. For sure. Um, you know, and I, and I think that uh, one of the things that's interesting about these types of systems is we've talked about, we've gone all the way from personal audio systems where you could, where you got headphones to work out, be outside in to more of the outdoor, the portable stuff that, that Klipsch makes to the things you can do yourself, like the surface mount things and add another zone uh, onto your amplifier. And now we've talked about the stuff that uh, requires a professional to help you install it. Um, one last thing, I think the last piece of the puzzle is how do you drive this outdoor system? And I want to talk a little bit about the Klipsch KDA amplifiers. Um, what, what are these and what can they do? So the KDA amplifiers are digital amplifiers. Um, so a lot of, a lot of consumers think about AVRs where it's, you know, your source and then it's also powering the speaker. So you can plug, uh, you know, your Apple TV into a receiver. The receiver will then take that signal and, and uh, you know, decode the surround sound and then power the speakers. The KDA amplifiers are purpose built to power the speakers only. So you'll notice on the back of them, they have RCA inputs. So line inputs from a source, whether it's uh, uh, any sort of uh, streaming device, really anything with an analog output. Um, you know, we mentioned clip stream products. So like a, a clip gate or even a Sonos port uh, can plug right into the back of this. And what's special about the Klipsch KDA amplifiers, they're extremely efficient, just like our speakers, but your integrator, your custom integrator can actually dig into the KDA amplifier and do a couple things. They can pull up equalization and limiter presets and not to get too technical, but it's essentially um, a custom tuned uh, program built for the speakers that attach to it. So no other amplifiers on the market have this where it can optimize the performance for whatever speaker it's plugged into, whether it's the Pro Series landscape system, the AW under Eve product, the Rock product. Uh, this is a very important aspect about these, these uh, KDA amplifiers. Secondly, they can connect to your network, so you can uh, uh, run them through uh, control products, so they'll tie into your Control 4 system, and then you can dig into uh, the, the GUI or the menu built into the, the product and do all this programming and do custom tuned equalization. Uh, I think they have seven bands of parametric EQ, limiter settings, and then of course access all those presets. So extremely customizable to your product and to your system. And this can all be done by your professional integrator. That's incredible. So presets for the Klipsch landscape system, for for instance, something that's already built into yes. it that 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 EQs that system and 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 modifies that system for the best experience that you've got. That's that's a really cool thing with these amplifiers. Now on the front end, say I wanted to have a very simple system where I'm just Bluetoothing off my phone. How do I get that included into the the KDA amplifier so that that can pick up the signal and then distribute it out? Is it a front end like a uh, uh, you know, an Apple TV or a, a node. 
you can control your music stream that way for sure. I mean, if you're connecting to your Wi-Fi outside, then you can control your source. So I, I don't know if I would stream via Bluetooth. Bluetooth may not have the range to go into the, the house to reach the equipment, but Wi-Fi will penetrate the walls better, Matt. So, you know, most streaming units as a source into the amplifier, you're going to be able to access uh, with, with an app through Wi-Fi. So that, that's pretty easy these days. Um, and I think uh, we're getting close to, um, Brittany is sending me some uh, really good questions. Um, I, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to answer them, but, but they, I think some of them, um, yeah, we have answered. But uh, we're getting close to that, if you guys can see that in the text, uh, the group text. But um, oh, yeah. So, Mike, the question was about Bluetooth. I just mentioned, you know, you can control your source typically through an app through Wi-Fi, which will actually penetrate the walls and, and it'll reach your right. source, which is connected to your, your amp as a front end source. Unless it's my Wi-Fi, apparently, which won't reach out to my front porch. But sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's a new, I think we're a good new now. space. You're, you went inside. OK, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's the weather cool. got particularly great. <laughs> So, so, so we've talked about these these uh, these speakers being um, you know this system um, which was installed by a professional and and mm -hmm. and and configured. Um, also, you know at clips.com/slash/custom, you can find an integrator close to you. There's also yes. um, Clips will help you design these systems. Um, yes. You know for your for your outdoor stuff. And I'm going to bring up some designs that we've done um, just so you can kind of see. We're going to start small, and this will answer I think a lot of the questions in the thread to see this stuff in action. But uh, uh, let's look at what it, what it looks like if you've got maybe a thousand square feet. Um, you know, yep. here's here's the uh, KDA and the subs and the rocks. So maybe right. you guys can kind of talk about this space. Right. So what we what we have here is obviously a bird's eye view, but um, with a thousand square feet, you're probably not running more than than two, or I should say more than one zone. And by zones, I mean uh, the ability to control a specific source in a specific area of the backyard. So in this case, we've got this sort of patio or back deck area, and then we've got sort of this garden sitting area over on the right hand side. And you can see, um, I, I don't know how easily everyone can see this, but on the deck area, we're actually using landscape satellites. And then on the garden sitting area, we're using actually rock satellites. And this is just an aesthetic choice. Generally, sometimes it's it's a consequence of your ability to install a stake in the ground uh, for the landscape system or the landscape satellites. But generally, it's just an aesthetic choice of what the user wants to see or not see in this case. And then you see up at the top here, sort of in between the two areas, uh, we have a burial subwoofer. So you can see how these are connected. And the speakers, the landscape satellites, are daisy chained to the rocks. So they're all getting the same signal but this is all coming out of uh, essentially a single channel of the KDA amplifier. And then on another channel, you're getting the output to the subwoofer. And that allows you to do two things. Obviously, you can run multiple subwoofers, daisy chaining them together off a single channel, but it allows you to run that EQ that we talked about in the KDA amplifier. You can run a different EQ for the subwoofer and then a different EQ for the satellite speakers. And that, again, is very important. You can really dial in a customized sound for your area. Um, you know, this is uh, the subwoofer's uh, positioned pretty close to the house. So you're probably going to roll off a little bit of like 125 to 250 to accommodate uh, that boominess. And at the same time, the satellites uh, really only go down to about 125 or 150. So everything below that, you're going to roll off. And that's where the sub's going to take over. Fantastic. And I love the idea that that's just one KDA amp driving yeah. eight speakers in one sub. So yep. um, this suddenly becomes very efficient, which is a hallmark of Klipsch, Klipsch products. Yeah. And from an, from an acoustic standpoint, but also from a, an economic standpoint, you know, you're not, you're not investing in a rack of gear. You're investing in one amplifier, you know, eight speakers, six or eight speakers and a subwoofer. And that is, I mean, that's a killer setup. You know, I mentioned in our backyard, we've got uh, one sub and a few satellites. And even that is a like total overkill for our yard. So even this smaller, you know, one 1,000 square foot setup, um, it goes a long way. 
Before we get to the last couple of questions, um, I want to go to the other extreme. Um, what if you have a massive backyard and you want to do something crazy with it? Let's look at yeah. what, what what something like that would look like, a, a grande system of, you know, say 6,000 square foot backyard. Yeah. Yeah. So this is for, uh, um, you know, a, a what we would call an estate more than a, <laughs> a backyard, but uh, you know, for someone that has a pool and maybe a dining area on the patio, and then a, a, another area that's sort of a, a sitting like fire pit area, and then a, a pergola, you can you can wire those up as separate zones. So you can see there's actually four different zones of audio here, meaning they can control different sources or different uh, different audio sources, different types of music in this case, probably to these different areas. And what we're seeing a lot now is uh, in sort of the, the backyard outdoor living space, there'll be a TV. So maybe you want one of these zones to run whatever the TV audio is. And then the pool is music that, you know, the pool is maybe uh, dance music or, you know, some of Mark's college party industrial music. Whereas the fire pit is something a little bit more low key and you can, you can adjust that and you have that flexibility uh, and you can see how these are all set up. It's, it's two or three amps per system just because of, um, you know, you want enough power to push all this sound, but the ability for these to one tie into a control system. So control for Crestron makes it extremely easy on the end user or, um, you know, a, like Mark was saying, using the Klipsch uh, gate, the Klipsch stream ecosystem, or even a Sonos port, you know, any of these, wireless streaming ecosystems or whole house ecosystems. Now you can use Google, uh, Google Assistant or uh, Amazon Alexa as a whole home audio system. And, and so using an Alexa dot as the input on each of these zones and being able to program that separately. It's incredibly flexible and it's an incredibly easy user experience. Fantastic. And, and I love the, going, yeah, go I ahead, Mark. This Matt real quick, when you're outside, and you've been outside all day, you know, and you're not really itching to go inside because it's been one of those great weekend days. Uh, it encourages a good quality music streaming service as well. I would say like Cobas, for example. I, I mean, when you have a quality audio system, you want to feed it with good tunes, you know, and, and what is interesting is when you have guests over it's kind of like, hey, I take requests, and then you search and you find the music, like the obscure song they really want to hear. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's part of the fun, too, because it's like, okay, well, how does this system sound with this, you know, or that? And it's just, you're going to be outside, and, you know, Travis, you will end up going through a bottle of bourbon. And I don't know if I have a recommendation for you, by the way, on what's the best one for outside. <laughs> But, you know, uh, there, there are some greatest hits and, and, you know, that's another, maybe that's another uh, live stream. You know, we'll have you on to talk about, you know, bourbon and music listening because that, that could be another session in itself. But that is part of the fun. Uh, and it has to be fun. Everybody, you know, that's why we do this. We have fun talking about this stuff. And we love these questions. These are great questions. Yeah. Everybody's really engaged. I, I think it's fantastic. Man. Yeah. And I'm sorry to anyone that uh, does not get their question answered. We have so many that we try to get to them, but uh, you know, we just run out of time. So let me ask, um, we're into the lightning round now. I have some very good questions. Um, we're down to the last uh, five minutes or so of, of the broadcast, yeah. but I, I wanna throw some questions out there and have you guys maybe respond to these. Um, you know, Give us a, a 30 seconds, a minute on each one if we could. Um, this one comes from uh, Jeff Arne. It's uh, any suggestions for setting up the outdoor system since you may be moving from speaker to speaker, mono, comma, et cetera. Ah, this is, this is an excellent question. There are two ways you can do it, Jeff. One is mono. Obviously, since you said you're, you don't know where the listener is in an outdoor system, they could be sitting you know, by the fire. They could be sitting at the, the backyard dining room table. And the, a lot of times the listeners are moving. If it's a, if it's an outdoor garden party or, or a get together, people are standing, people are moving around. I always recommend mono. Um, you know, you're getting the same content anywhere in the in the space. There's another way you can do it, uh, which is a little bit more in depth. You generally need more channels this way, but uh, it's called walking stereo, where if you have a span of these outdoor speakers in front of you, you essentially leapfrog 
the channels. So you start with left, then you go to right, then you have a left and then right, and you're sort of going through uh, alternating left and right. So really wherever you're at in the zone, you're getting some sort of stereo, stereo. image. Yeah, so again, you don't know where your listeners are going to be, but that does give them a, a stereo image. At the same time, um, while that is an exceptional uh, case typically, and it's an exceptional way to listen to music, uh, when people are in a backyard, they just want it to be loud. They want to have music. Set it up mono and just it, it, let, <laughs> let it rip. It's fine. I'm cracking up, Mike, because it would encourage you know your drunk neighbors at midnight to to take a stroll on a continual loop in that yeah. estate plan that we just saw. You know, <laughs> yeah. they just be wandering yeah. around and people are going, "What are they doing? Oh, they're getting the audio experience. They're it's they're, they're on their self guided it, yeah. tour. It's the stereo yeah. effect. It's hi fi." Uh, <laughs> so uh, another question that I have is from um, Steve Zwicky. Um, he says, I have nothing outside now. What is the ideal beginner setup? I have Eve access. I'm new to Klipsch, yeah. but I have ProMedia. The next projects are the patio. Cool. Okay. I mean, a classic beginner. We talked about the groove, obviously. That's, that's a great portable speaker. Really, a, if you want to get into a real outdoor permanent system. The best beginner system for me is just get a couple of AW speakers or a couple of KHO 7s. Uh, like I said, there if you can hang a picture on the wall, you can wire up outdoor speakers. If you have Eve access, uh, run some speaker wire out there. You know, it'll take you an afternoon to get everything installed and you'll be uh, listening to music outside by the evening. Yeah, great question. That's awesome. I love I love the idea there that you, you, you can get to that right off the bat. Um, yeah. you know, this is a great great patio experience. Zone two on the amplifier, nothing else to deal with, and you can do it yourself. Yep, exactly right. We want to talk a little bit about the the pro design uh, offerings that Klipsch has to its customers before before we go. Um, and yeah. I'm going to share that screen again so you can see the. Uh, um, the the website that we need to go to but uh can we talk a little bit about what Klipsch offers its customers yeah yeah so we actually have a free service called pro system design and this is something that we actually started for uh our integrators and our, our retailers that were building out systems for end users but honestly if you're an end user email us at pro system design at klipsch.com say hey i'm looking to, to set up an outdoor system we have a team of very well seasoned, very smart audio engineers that will build out a system for you. If you can give them any sort of plans or even a napkin sketch of your backyard, uh, they can place the speakers exactly where they need to go for maximum coverage. They'll even recommend electronics. You know, if you tell them, hey, I've got this AVR or I've got this source, they can tell you, well, you know, take a look at this, this AVR, this, this AVR has a zone two. They'll recommend that as well. And they're Extremely smart guys have been in the industry for a long time. They know uh, exactly how these things need to be installed for the best experience. So pro system design at klipsch.com. It's very rare you get, an, you get an email address announced on a live stream. Yeah. <laughs> you can, so you can also go to pro system design dot uh, which is a website where you essentially set up an account, but it will do the exact same thing as sending an email. So whatever is easiest for you. Fantastic. I've got an update, Mark, on our five groove winners. Yeah, I saw that. Do we, should we announce them right now? Let's um, do it. So the winners are, and we will reach out to you, obviously, uh, Brittany will get, get with you to uh, to get your groove in the mail to you, is uh, Jeff Arn or Arne, if you're French, um, Mark Rissman, Steve Zawicki, David, uh, Dave Stearns, and Cherokee Walker. You guys have all won grooves. Great questions, guys. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Fan fantastic stuff. Um, Mike, I, thank you so much for joining us and talking about, um, you know, providing your expertise and your insight to this. Uh, Thanks for this having me. Stuff. Thanks for having me. Sorry for the technical issues. Uh, my, my first plan of action is to go buy another Google Hub so I can have uh, Wi-Fi out on my porch. <laughs> thank you, guys. It's a lot of fun. Thanks again, and um, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, we hope that uh, you had fun, and we we know there will be additional questions. Uh, usually on our Facebook page, the questions continue. We'll try to get to them, you know, to yeah. give some good answers uh, because some of these questions range from very advanced to basic, and we love that because 
um, we know that our community is full of people that just love music. And that's why we're here. We all love music. We love to play music. We love to play back music. Uh, and, and, you know, also to give you all a little bit of a glimpse of the passion behind these products. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, uh, a lot of effort goes into making these uh, products really live up to the brand promise and, yeah. and legacy of Klipsch, uh, what yeah. Paul Klipsch established. And to have that for outside and with the, the warranty, you know, lots of questions about snow, desert heat, all everything in between. I told you, you know, in, in Indiana, it goes from minus 20 to 100. So it, we get the crazy stuff, including hail. You know, did I mention the hail? So, uh, you know, I'm a Florida boy and the hail is just like terrorizing <laughs> me. But but the, the speakers hold up better than the roof and the gutters. So I'm just telling you, you know, we got the warranty to back this stuff up. We're, we, we've been around for 75 years. I think Matt looks really good, by the way. You know, he, he looks great for, you know. <laughs> for being around uh, 75 years. And no, Paul <laughs> Clips did not teach me how to shower. Paul Clips taught me about putting the speaker in the corner. Thanks. But we're going to be around for another 75 years. Another 75 years. We're one of these companies that, you know, the warranty, we're going to honor the warranty. Okay. We're going to be around for a while. You know, um, I, I'm never going to retire. That's basically the plan I'm on. So, you know. Well, uh, I think from, from all of us at Clips, we want you to enjoy your summer. We want you to enjoy your music outside yeah. and really just uh, just take it outside. And, and hopefully this has been a little bit of uh, uh, some insight to how you can do that. Well, yeah. thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, enjoy. Yes, enjoy. I'm going to bring up the the, uh, the lounge music. And enjoy enjoy Matt's custom selection of music. It's for, it's for you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>